Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome. I am the sports judge. I know the Lakers are not in the playoffs and got eliminated in the first round, but let's talk L.A. where Darvin Ham was relieved of his duties as head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers along with the coaching staff. So now the Lakers are back at it again. They're once again riding the coaching carousel, searching for a new voice, another head coach. Um, it's another change at the top for the for the Los Angeles Lakers, and another coach for LeBron James once again. The next head coach will be the team's third in the last four seasons and the tenth in LeBron's career. Coaches have not lasted very long on the job with LeBron on the team. This job is turning into an awful job. It's not as glamorous. It's atrocious. I'm pretty confident there isn't a single coach who feels this job is desirable. Coaching a brand name franchise seems like the most unappealing thing to do, suddenly. It may seem like a desirable job or an attractive place for coaches, but the expectations and the stress of the position makes it less attractive and less desirable, especially when you see how quickly Laker coaches have come and gone in recent years. I mean, they change coaches like a man changes his underwear. It's a franchise that can't seem to keep a coach after two or three seasons because things don't go uh, the way you anticipate. You get rid of the coach. Suddenly, he's the person to blame for the debacle early postseason exits, and everything else around the damn organization. Only a handful of coaches have ever made it four or more years coaching LeBron James. And obviously, it's always going to be someone else's fault, anybody but the star players, and LeBron's fault, right? When they don't win. When they don't win, someone else is going to take the fall. The coach is the fault guy, not the GM, not not the, not the players, but the coach. And that's stressful. That's frustrating. It would certainly make me hesitate. Do I really want to take this job? Do I really need this headache? You know, am I going to get fired after one season? I mean, th those are the thoughts that got to be going through your mind, going through your head. We know LeBron's not going anywhere anytime soon. We know the Lakers are stuck with LeBron. That's when the organization has to say, look, LeBron needs to let the coach be the coach. So when they hire this next coach, whoever that may be, they need to say, he's going to be, he's going, look, he's going to be here. He's our guy. We're going to do as he says, not what LeBron wants, what the coach says is best for the team. This is why I appreciate the Heat culture, because Miami is the only organization that empowered their coach over LeBron. Jeannie Buss and the Lakers front office are gutless when it comes to letting the coach have the loudest voice in the room. Instead, it's a veteran superstar who apparently has the most say out of everybody. And that's a problem. And so in Eric Spolster's case, Miami Heat's coach, and during the time LeBron was there in Miami, Spolster had the backing of the Heat's management and Pat Riley. And, and we all know how Pat Riley operates. We, we Look, we all know how, how Pat Riley does business. He runs the show in Miami. He has the, he has the last word, the final say what goes on. And, 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 you, and you think LeBron was going to come to Miami and tell Pat Riley how to run his franchise and who to hire as the head coach? Hell no, certainly not. Whoever becomes the next Lakers head coach, rather that be J.J. Reddick, Sam Cassell, whoever it is, they're not getting empowered with LeBron. I don't care who you are. You're not going to be empowered with LeBron there. You're not going to be empowered. You're, you're not going to be able to coach the team as long as he's on the roster. And that's what makes you carefully consider 
taking this job. Wait a minute. Do I want to take this job? You know, I mean, I'm sorry. It's a very high prestige job and you get a lot of benefits from it. But at best, you're basically a puppet, not really able to coach the team the way you would you would want to. You're not paid very well and you get you, you don't get paid a lot. I'll speak based on prior history here because I'm not going to predict what the Lakers are going to do going forward. But historically, the Lakers have not been willing to pay top dollar for head coaches. They did. They did for Phil Jackson. And as a result, built the dynasty and won championships. But since then, not much to show for it. And after they won multiple championships and after Phil Jackson left for good, they've been outbid many times for coaches who got other offers and took other jobs. Yes, a a, a number of names, head coaches have turned down the Lakers and took other jobs. And because of that, the Lakers had to settle for first year unproven coaches. Anybody who who the who the Lakers would call would obviously take the call because the opportunity to coach a worldwide franchise like the Lakers in a great city like Los Angeles where you can draw players and attract superstars to come play is extremely a- attractive. But the idea of the Lakers job has been less desirable because it's so damn demanding And it can quickly become a daunting task. Look, since the 2010 season, the 2010-2011 season, in 13 seasons, the Lakers have had seven head coaches. They've had, they, they, they have, they, they've only won 50 games one time. In 13 years, they've missed the playoffs seven times. They've made the playoffs six times. They've been eliminated from the first round three of those six times. They made the playoffs. And of course, they got a championship in the bubble that a lot of people say don't even count. You know, but if I'm the Lakers and I've been saying this for years, I've gone on record to say they should Hire Mark Jackson. I've thrown his name out there so many times. I feel like the brother's deserving of another opportunity. You know, you hear a lot of people say that he's got blackballed from from the coaching industry, that he would never get another opportunity to coach. And I don't think that's right because we saw the job that he did in Golden State. You know, he produced in Golden State. You know, he built a championship contending team that Steve Kerr took and guided to multiple championships. You know, a lot of credit goes to him for assembling that roster and help and helping put that team together. You know, so I definitely think he's worthy of consideration. I definitely think that's a name you 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 take into consideration and you offer him the job. You know? I think he has the credentials to be a head coach. But the Lakers are not going to go that route because the Lakers are too damn cheap. They don't want to pay anybody, and they want a yes man. You know, I've been saying this too. The Lakers want a damn yes man. They want somebody that's going to come in, kiss their ass, and do what the hell they want them to do. See, they're not, they're, Jeannie Buss and Rob Palinka are not going to sit back and let the coach do his job. And you got to sit, and sometimes you got to sit back let the coach do his job. You got to hire a coach who's going to gravitate to the audience, who's going to come into Laker Nation and resonate with the fan base. You need a coach like that. You also need a proven coach. I, I, I'm done with all these first-year head coaches, and it's no disrespect to them because everyone needs a legitimate shot to prove themselves, right? How How... How are we going to know if you are the coaching type if you don't get an opportunity? You got to start somewhere. Just not with the Los Angeles Lakers. They experimented enough with first year head coaches. I like JJ, but I don't think JJ's the guy for the Lakers job. 
You guys heard me say that over and over and over again. But as long as LeBron is a Laker, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted the Lakers to get rid of LeBron. Because as long as he's a Laker, the coach is not going to be able to to do his job. He's not going to be able to coach this team the way he wants to coach this team because the Lakers don't empower their head coaches. See, they they listen to the players over, over the head coach. And how do you expect to get anywhere? You know, I, I don't see this going anywhere until LeBron departs LA. I don't care who they hire. So whoever they hire is going to be the same thing again. And that's why I think it's hard to get a proven big name coach because they don't want the headache. They don't want the headache. And then I come to LA and then the first time something bad happens or if we, if we exit the postseason early again, then what? I'm going to lose my job too. So no, thank you. I don't want this job because basically I'm taking this job. You're hiring me to basically get fired. So that's why a lot of coaches are like, no, 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 no. I don't want this job. I I don't, I, this job is not for me. It's not worth the headache. You know, yes, it's a, it's a glamorous job. Great city, a team with a rich history, all that good stuff. But, no, I'll pass on that. And, and that's a hard no for me because, you know, I, I've seen how much of a train wreck the organization has been in recent years. I see that they, you know, only qualify for play-in tournament games. They they get a playoff spot. Then when they get a playoff, playoff spot, they end up losing in the first round. And then when they lose in the first round, I'm now on the hot seat. You know, not the players, not the GM, because the GM's not going to look himself, Rob Palenka's not going to look himself in the mirror and say, hey, what am I doing wrong? What can I do better as a GM? How can I, how can I assemble this roster? How can I give the coach the right pieces to make a run, right? Because that's what it ultimately comes down to, the front office and what they have not done to give the coach the right players in order to guide the team deep into the playoffs and to another championship. So, you know, it's one of those things, right? And I don't care what the Lakers do at this point. It, it, it really doesn't matter as long as LeBron is there. Thanks for watching, everyone. Really appreciate the love and support. We'll talk soon. I'm checking out of here now. Thanks for watching my videos. As always, really appreciate the love and support. If you guys haven't already, do me a huge favor and hit that subscribe button for me. Talk to you guys soon. Checking out. Peace.